Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Helen Noble, celebrant of Surrey, and I'm here to give you weekly doses of tips and tricks of all things ceremony. This week, I am talking registrar. When do you book your registrar? So, Number one is knowing the difference between a registrar and a celebrant. That won't necessarily come easily and you might not even know it's a thing, but you're here so you know celebrancy exists. Hooray! I would love to know how you knew celebrancy existed, whether it was because the venue said something, whether you've been to a friend's wedding and they had a celebrant. Um, how do you know that you have this choice? I'd be really interested to know because it kind of comes back to when do you book your registrar? Um, those of you that have been following me have realised it's um, wedding fair season here in the UK and there are pretty much a, is a wedding fair um, every weekend at the moment. Um, I'm not going to all of them but I'm doing what I can. Having a venue that has a celebrant on their suppliers list is already brilliant because they understand what it is. For you now to have that conversation with the venue, at wedding fairs, because it is wedding fair season in the UK, you will hopefully be going to nose around some venues, chatting to some venue staff, having some tours, and possibly making inquiries and provisional bookings. At that point, hopefully, the venue will say to you, are you thinking of getting married? or are you thinking of um, having a celebrant-led wedding? Now, the downside of that is, of course you're thinking of getting married. That's why you're planning a wedding. <laughs> um, so that's not really the right way to ask the question. And you won't, you're, you can't answer it wrong. You're like, yes, we're thinking of getting married. But no, not at the wedding. It's being able to know enough and have enough confidence and have enough knowledge to know that actually that question of are you thinking of getting married or having a celebrant led wedding is a weird way of asking so marriage wedding different i know i bang on about it marriage is legally binding lifelong commitment that has to be done by a licensed person i.e a registrar or a vicar um and it is a controlled contract therefore you can't say what you like you can't do what you want you turn to page three you repeat after me and you sign here so if you're all for an easy life and you've got too much going around your head have a registrar if style personality choice freedom control preparation um managing and eliminating any risk of failure if all of those things are important then you're my person and you want a celebrant led wedding you can get married anytime pretty much as long as you have i'm going to say that again actually you can get married anytime whenever you want you can get married it does not have to be at your wedding registrars register births, deaths and marriages. They are not in the labour ward witnessing the birth. You go register the birth because the birth is the event. The registrar is not in the midwifery profession. They just register the birth. When somebody dies and they take their last breath, it's not witnessed by the registrar. They are not in the funeral profession. The event of the death has happened. They just have to register it. Registrars are not in the wedding profession. They are civil servants, they work for the council, they are in the marriage registration business profession. So that's why you do have to get married at some point because with a wedding it's a hundred percent ceremonial. It's all about you, your choice of readings, your choice of words, your style, all of it. It's the event, it's not the legally binding contract. Same with birth, same with death. The registrar does not need to be at your wedding. So the video was titled, when do you book your registrar? Which leaves the question, so when do you book your registrar? 
I would say maybe it's only once a year really that my couples register their marriage after the wedding. I tend to veer them away from that because there's always the risk of we just didn't quite get round to it. You have the most incredible wedding, you're on cloud nine and the last thing you want to do is, you know, go and be very sensible and do your paperwork and have your passport ready and prove that you're not being coerced and know your other halves, mother's middle name and how she spells it. Is it Anne with an E or Anne without? Yes, they do ask you random questions like that because they are checking whether you're legit. As a celebrant, I don't want that responsibility just yet. I don't, you know, I'm going to assume you're legit and you want to be here and you are willing. Will you marry me? I will. Not do you marry me? Do you marry me? Marry me. Yes. It's not an instruction. It's a will. It's a choice. So the fact that you've been proposed and the fact that you've said yes is yes, I am willing. Yes, I choose to be here. Yes, I am able. Um, so that's good. It's all about the choice. And therefore, you embrace a celebrant led wedding. <coughs> excuse me. But we do need to get you married. Now, I've said maybe once a year, my couple will get married, do the legally binding, say, the Monday after they've had their wedding. Um, but they're all feeling a little bit. <laughs> so I best not, but I totally get it if you do. The majority of my couples, 90%, get married in the wedding week. Now, for I've said it before, but just for the registration of marriage, you want to ask for the two by two registration of marriage, not an event, not a room hire, you don't need another 50 chairs, you don't need an hour of the registrar's time, you just need to register your marriage. If they say to you, oh, are you having a wedding? It literally is none of their business. They are not in the wedding business. They are not wedding professionals. It's none of their business. So you don't even need to have an answer. I've got um, a couple at the moment, actually. They booked me, she just reached out. She was like, we 100% want a tailor-made ceremony for us. We want you. We haven't got a venue. We're not married. We haven't got a date. We just think spring next year. I'm like, fab. I love being the first on the journey. It's brilliant. So then we can, she's like, what do you think of this venue? I was like, oh, I'm off to this venue today. I'll do a video and show you. Um, so actually we've done the whole journey together. It's been amazing. Um, I delivered the script today and she just phoned me up crying. She was like, I'm not going to get through. It's amazing. So I've had the best morning getting feedback from um, the husband and wife to be. And he was like, oh, that's just bang on. I'm really excited now. Sorry to keep interrupting. I was like, interrupt away. I'm glad you're excited. So that script delivery, that excitement, that level, you wouldn't get with a registrar because you wouldn't get to see the script because it's all a mystery and you wouldn't know what to say, when to say it, where to stand, yada, yada, yada. Don't do it to yourself. Have a celebrant. Um, but they are going to book their registrar. The rule is you have to give 28 days notice. So you can't get married tomorrow you do need to give 28 days notice. And that is because they need to do the checks. They need to check you're not being coerced. They need to check you are willing. They need to check you haven't got a husband in the cupboard um, or you're a sex slave. They need to check, it's legit. Are you on the books? Were at the birth, was your birth registered? Are you, have you pinched someone's ID and actually is that name registered on the death registry? They're checking. You are who you say you are, and you're going to marry who they say they are. It's really, really important. Registrars have a very important role. Um, so that's why they need the 28 days. They will assume, however, because it is the norm, that you are booking a ceremony as well as the marriage. So it will, you'll probably get um, a quote like 400 to 600 pounds. And you're thinking, no, I only want to do the paperwork. That means they've missold you. They haven't actually sold you the registration of marriage. They've sold you an event. They've sold you a wedding, not just a marriage. But remember, we're doing the wedding. We're all things wedding. Sorry, that's what fell down. Um, they have registered. They want to register your marriage at the wedding. <clears throat> they don't have to. They are in the marriage civil servant business. They will register your marriage. I'm all wedding. So twenty eight days. 
to register your marriage and then whenever um you, it only lasts a certain amount of time i think it's a year and a day don't quote me on that i'm going to double check um but you're regist registering your intent to marry isn't evergreen so for example during the pandemic everyone's wedding that had been um booked and ready they then had to re-register and repay and resubmit all their paperwork a lot of people are like that's a little bit unfair we proved who we are we proved we're choice da, da, da. their argument is so much happens in the pandemic you might not actually be willing to marry this person anymore but you've been in lockdown and you've been guest like you know so much so much has happened in the pandemic their due diligence was to start again because people came out of the pandemic a very different person to how they went in um that's a whole nother it's a whole nother video um gonna clock that i'm gonna do that one um so helpful things to you the norm tends to be wedding week ish the Tuesday morning or the Thursday morning of that weekend that you are then having your wedding. We also try and have the rehearsal around that time the week before maybe, so that they've got that hit of ceremony. They get all excited about the wedding, they have their marriage, and then we have the wedding wedding rather than just the rehearsal. But they're all set. So they're actually less nervous going into the marriage because we've had a wedding rehearsal. So it's all about kind of managing expectations, managing nerves, making it feel as special as possible the whole journey so if you don't want to do it wedding week or you can't work it out or you're not sure when you've got time booked off work it might be obviously you've only got so many days holiday a year um things like bridal boutiques might only be able to give you appointments in the week so you have to take a day's holiday it might be makeup trials can only happen in the week so you have to take a day's holiday so by the time you get to the registrar or the wedding rehearsal, you're like, I've actually run out of holiday, I've got to wait to wedding week, which is why the marriage tends to happen wedding week, because you've already booked it off. So you're not using any more holiday. So just think about your holiday entitlement from work, because you're going to take the wedding week off and honeymoon, at which point you may have run out of holiday. So the marriage registration two by two is always a weekday morning so you will have to take half a day's holiday if that's something you want to do which is why you want to try and do it wedding week hopefully that's helpful if you're an entrepreneur and you're self-employed and you and your other half doesn't have a you can only take 22 days holiday or whatever um then pick a date that's also really special to you it might be a year and a day from when you got engaged and then it's six months from then till the marriage um, because the emotions change from once you're married. My point is, you have choice. You have freedom. Embrace it. You also possibly have a finite amount of holiday leave from work. Therefore, you need to think about that because the two by two registration of marriage is in a weekday morning, which you would normally be at work of, so you have to book it off. So think about that. 28 days notice, weekday mornings. If you call them out to your venue and you call them out on a Saturday, you're looking at 800. If you go to them in their working week, on their time, at their place of work, without the paraphernalia of an event and just to register the marriage, you're looking at about 50 pounds. So don't go paying double register your marriage it's about 50 quid each and then throw everything at the wedding because it's all about you at the wedding not the law hope that's helpful please let me know again where you found celebrancy on your journey and if the venue promoted it and asked you the question are you having a celebrant -led ceremony or do you want to get married at your wedding because it's a bit of a funny one anyway lots of love Take care for now. Bye.